What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're out in Dawson, Texas where we just finished pouring this very large slab. We just got the last truck and we will be setting our sights on framing on this project coming up pretty soon. So the crew's out here. Uh, it's a little bit wet still so uh, they need it to it's a Saturday morning and kind of need kind of need things to set up a little bit better before we go too much further but this just shows you some of what we got here these are our step down for the garage area right here our pump truck is fixing the head out right there as you can see and i just stopped by to check on this project but you can see we got a lot of porch going all the way around this thing this will be the the house the living area sort of a breezeway area between the garage and the living we're starting to work with the uh with our trowel there for the finishing trial the whirly bird and yeah we're excited about this project getting underway uh, we will be showing you guys the progress on this build Dawson Texas that's where this is at coming on there you go it's on a beautiful setting got a pond back over there with the lookout over the porch It's just an easy going morning here in Dawson. This is, I shared a little bit when we were out here doing the pad site. I think it had a two and a half inch PVR potential vertical rise. And we talked about what we were doing here for the foundation. This is a post tension to see the cables here on this side this will be the side that they actually pull uh, all the compression so we will do a pre-tension and post-tension and what that is is they will just come snug this thing up here within the next couple of days hopefully early next week and then they'll come back several days later and they will officially tighten it so uh, that's a two-step process pre-tension post-tension uh, but yeah we were over here building this up and brought in quite a bit of dirt actually uh, when it came down to it so porch going all the way around the guys are burning some of their trash out here which will help heat things up at least where some of this concrete is it's always part of the process you can see how wet it is still right in here uh, as they make their way to remove these forms um, they've got plenty of time to be able to do that so but this is always an exciting point of the progress on the on a job because the stage is set now for this barnuminium uh, you can see where we we are a little bit high here on this side with our dirt work which they're gonna need more dirt um, I'm not sure if this is one where they said they were gonna expand the pond I can't remember but clients are aware that they're gonna need more dirt off these off these sides but yeah it's uh it's built up which is great a lot of times when you're out on a flat piece of property 
I just, I mean, this is not super flat, but it, it for the most part, it's not super high. Uh, so having a little bit of built up around is way better than being in a hole. So this is the other side of our post tension. So we have the, the stays that are here on the inside of these forms for the post tension cables. So you can't see those cables coming through because there's a flange that's attached to the form boards uh, that makes it as a stay to where when we pull those cables, it holds that into place. And you can see <clears throat> this is the other side, what it'll look like where you got these cables that run through. Typically you'll have four foot spacing somewhere in that general vicinity and then these are like ones that run down in the beams you got a couple other there so you know you got grade beams where you have a few more that run through there so we've got a grade beam that runs across there one that runs right here one that runs there on the end um, and then this here is our embeds this is a steel embed this gets anchored into the corners of the of the builds where you'll see one right over there where our main structure will be these are porches here so we tend to not place those uh, we will anchor these later but uh, you might be able to see it i don't know if in a little bit but that's where that one is right there and this is uh, what the embeds look like these are pre-welded uh, at the manufacturer and got these these uh, steel pegs here on the underneath side which holds that um, and all this gets reinforced down into this into the concrete so nice probably half inch thick plate there um, 12 by 4 inch something like that so that's what we that's what we use for our embeds on the corners so overall we poured 290 yards today of concrete this was a very smooth pour um, uh, it was a little bit wet like I said but overall went really smooth the guys are um, beginning to trowel a little bit of it in they were here just a few minutes ago so it's going to take a little bit longer but yeah it's uh they started pretty early uh, so we're about six or seven hours into this uh into this pour it's it's better this way where you got a little more time than it is where you don't have any time because it's so hot and so with the milder climates it does give us a little more flexibility on time. Um, and this is a, an instance where it probably hurts you a little bit to start to pour so early because just the climate and all that, it's, it's cooler in the morning and depending on how it comes and depending on the distance that the trucks are having to travel. Uh, I'm not sure, I didn't talk to Mark Marietta because the last truck was leaving when I got here. Um, but Brandon probably has a story because he left before I got here too, so. I'm always amazed at the process of concrete and the way that it works. So let's talk about the understanding of how concrete is made. It's essentially like a cake. So there's different layers in the cake. And what are the ingredients? So. In the ingredients, we have sand and gravel mixed with a glue, which is the cement, and then water. So these, say, three layers of product all come together to form what we know as concrete. Now, one without the other wouldn't be, wouldn't work. Uh, essentially, what happens is you've got this this uh, chemical reaction that's happening over time. So right whenever the concrete is 
all mixed and put together, that process begins immediately when the concrete goes in the truck. Uh, all that to say, it, that's why it's most important that it gets poured out on site as soon as possible because you don't want to keep messing with it. Well, as you put it into place, it does begin to harden because of that chemical reaction that starts happening, but it's still very weak. So it's what happens in the days to come, which is pretty critical. Uh, meaning it's a hydration process to where the water with that concrete begins to create these uh, crystal, uh, I guess it starts to create this fiber type connection between the sand and gravel and all these fibers start to form like crystals inside here so it is a chemical reaction process this is the this is my most scientific i'm going to be today on the video uh, but ultimately that reaction is happening especially within the first seven days so it's pretty critical to keep uh to keep it moisturized as much as possible so that's why when you pour in the summer uh, you know, the drying out process, the concrete starts to get hot because that's the hydration process that's taking place where it needs more moisture sometimes so that it can maintain those crystals being formed. Now there's quite a bit of, of, of uh, moisture already, but the more water there is on the front end, the weaker it is. Uh, so it's a balance of power ultimately in the ingredients. So you got to make sure that you have a good mixture of each ingredient. Uh, anyways, that's a basic explanation, but over the next seven days, this is where this becomes critical. Also, that's where adding the reinforcements like the post tension, the cabling system, and at some point in time, maybe I will talk more about post-tension because what I've learned is there's a lot of misconceptions on the internet about why we use post-tension uh, versus rebar and who decides all that. In our case, it's actually an engineered uh, setup. Some people say, oh, uh, might make the claim that, oh, we're using post-tension because it's cheaper. And that's not necessarily true at all. Um, in our cases, we will have pours where we're using post tension. We've got piers. We got 40 inch grade beams. We got large five by five footings. We got all of these things. And do you think that that's because we chose the cheapest path to pour a foundation? Well, no, that's not. It's not how this works. Uh, but in Texas, we have expansive clay soils, which is what leads us to making some of the decisions like that. Um, we've had really good success with post tension. That's why we continue to use it. Um, it's, it's, it, it, is, it is very good. So, and then once you start having good results, it's, it's, it's best sometimes to repeat those processes. So anyhow, hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about some basic knowledge about concrete and what it's all about yeah i thought i'd check in on this project show you guys this brand new dawson barnuminium project which we showed you as we were out here doing some of the dirt work um and touching base here got a nice slab poured this morning before christmas time so this project will be coming along in 2026 so Hope you guys are here for it. Uh, if you're looking forward to following along, let us know in the comments below. We'll be sharing some details more with you on this project as we get into the framing portion. So stay tuned on our channel. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done that now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all the other places. I'm Josh Helm, wishing you all the best. Thanks for watching. Texas Best.